everybody. Let's see if we can get this up and running. There it goes. Took it a second, but I think we're rolling now. Hey to everyone. Hope you're having a great day. I didn't want to keep this very long today. I wanted this to be kind of a shorter live video today, but I did want to hop on and talk to you guys about people pleasing today. Felt like it was a topic that God was bringing up this morning, so that's what I wanted to hop on and talk to you guys about today. So I've got just a few anchor scriptures that I wanted to talk through in regards to people pleasing, and I wanted to talk about how assumption in our lives can be so dangerous. But I also wanted to talk about our own mindsets when it comes to other people and how our mindset can sabotage relationships in our personal life if we aren't careful to make sure that we are aligning our own mindset with God and what he has to say about different situations. You know, um, our mind in so many things is the battlefield. It really is. It's where the enemy can get in and whisper lies and cause us to get off track and cause us to get into false alignments in our personal lives. And so that's why it's so important for us to examine this today and to really walk through this teaching on people pleasing and to make it kind of fast today. So um, I'm just gonna kind of hop right into this. I know there may be some people who are hopping on as we go, but again, I'm gonna try to keep this a little bit shorter for you guys today and go over some of the main points. All right, sound good? Okay, so my main point in all of this today is this. You don't want to make everyone happy because everyone is not happy with God and they don't want to follow his will over their lives. So when you're truly living to please God, I want to tell you today that it's not going to make everyone happy. And that's something that you're going to have to really settle in your spirit and settle with yourself if you're really going to live an effective life as a Christian. Now, I think that we should be kind to people. Absolutely. I think that we should be considerate of other people. But you know what? As a Christian, you know, if you've got someone who's aligned with worldly standards and worldly views, you know, you're not going to make that person happy all of the time if you're truly living a walk for God and for Christ. Amen. And so it's something that you've got to kind of digest internally and go, okay, who am I going to serve? Am I going to live to serve people and to please people? Or am I going to serve God? Yes, I'm going to be kind to you. Yes, I'm going to be considerate to you. You know, we don't have to have the same views on this thing, but I'm not going to compromise my standards because you disagree with me in this area. Amen. And I've seen so many people who have aborted their purpose, their destiny, God alignments, whatever it may be in their personal life, just because they were so concerned about what other people thought. And you know what I think is so interesting about people pleasing? A lot of the times it only functions through assumption. So we assume that a certain person thinks that they want us to operate in a certain way. We assume that a person thinks X, Y, Z about us, you know, and it can so hinder us from making forward movement in what God is calling us to in Christ when we can consider other people above what God is telling us to do in a situation. And so that's why it's so critical that we talk about this today and we talk about the danger of people pleasing. And that may seem like kind of a strong word to say the danger of it, but it really, really is dangerous, ladies and gents when we allow people pleasing to rule our lives okay i wanted to read you matthew 10 34 today and it says do not think that i came to bring peace on earth i did not come to bring peace but a sword you know who was saying that phrase that was jesus actually and so what Jesus is saying is, if you understand the context of this scripture, the Bible is described as what? How many of you guys know? You could write it in the comments. It's described as being the sword of the spirit, right? Well, I want you guys to think about the nature of a sword. What is the nature of a sword? Well, the nature of a sword is to pierce, is to divide, is to separate, right? It's sharp. It does not always feel good in our personal lives, right? So if the Bible is described as a sword, it's because it came to bring division, amen? It came to separate what? Truths from lies over our personal life. And so if it brings this separation, if it brings this division, and if that is the purpose of the Bible is to call out the truth from, you know, darkness, from lies over our life, if it's to call out light and to separate it from darkness, you know, there's naturally going to be a separation that you walk in as a Christian and you have a decision to make. Am I going to follow what God is telling me to over this situation and be more concerned with what his opinion is versus what that person's opinion is? Or 
am I going to pick what I think people want me to say? And I say that word think very importantly because a lot of the time we assume what people want to hear and it's not even necessarily what they want a lot of the time. And so if you live this life of assumption where you assume what another person is thinking or feeling or what they want from you a lot of the time, it can lead to so many wasted years. It can lead to a lot of damage and fruit and all of this different stuff that we can face in our lives that can really get us off track. So that's why I always say be kind to people, be considerate to people, but ask questions. The best way to really find out what someone is thinking is to talk to them. You cannot just assume. And I've seen so many cases, and I'm going to talk you through an example of this today, where people assume what other people are thinking just based off of social media, just based off of XYZ, you know, so you need to talk to people and say, hey, what are your thoughts about XYZ? You know, conversation is really, really critical a lot of the time, you know, so that you can avoid misunderstandings in all different walks. That can be in the workplace, that can be in your personal relationships. I don't care what it is, but that's important, okay? So we just learned that the Bible separates and divides because it is that sword, right? And the nature of a sword is to pierce and it is to divide, all right? So when you're a Christian, we are called to align ourselves with truth, right? We're called to align ourselves with light, not with darkness. And so you have to pick because the world is going to side with that darkness, right? The world is going to align themselves with values, with morals, with principles, with things that have to do with darkness. And so if you're pleasing everybody, something in your walk with God is not right. I know you guys probably don't want to hear this today, but can we have truth talk? If you are pleasing everybody, something you're doing is probably not right. Amen? Because if you're pleasing God, it is very one-sided. You're going to be sided with truth. You're going to be sided with light. Amen? And you can love people who have different opinions from you, but it does not mean that that's what we ourselves are called to walk in. Amen? And so you've got to make a decision in your walk as a Christian. Are you going to be more concerned with what people think or what God thinks? And if you side with people, there's a good chance you're not going to fully fulfill the purpose and the call that God has on your personal life. Amen. Because when you fully step into that place of truth and light, it's going to make some people mad. It just will, ladies and gents. And it'll even make some Christians mad. Can we have truth talk today? And so you're not going to make everybody happy all at once. It's just not going to happen, ladies and gents. So you've got to decide if God's opinion is more important to you than people's opinion is, okay? And it's not to say that you can't disagree with people in love and still walk in relationship with them. You know, I have friendships and relationships in my life where I don't agree with them on everything. I don't agree with every single political stance that they have. I don't agree with every single thing that they believe in their personal lives or every single action that they do. But does that mean that I can't still walk in relationship with them and love them? Of course not, you know, and so we can hit this place, ladies and gents, where we can love people and we can disagree with them, but where we still walk in truth with our lives and what God is calling us to. Amen. And that's a decision that we have to make. You know, so many people get into either really good decisions or really bad decisions in their lives because of people pleasing. And this is why the Bible talks so closely about monitoring your close friend group. You know, we read in the book of Proverbs all the time, if you hang out, with fools, you'll start to act foolish a lot of the time. If you hang out with people who are not pursuing God with all of their might, that stuff rubs off and it could cause you to make decisions that are not as good. Where also, if you hang out with people who are pursuing and chasing after God, who have deep walks with God, it can influence you in a very positive way. And so, you know, this stuff rubs off whether we realize it or not. So a lot of times we have to make a conscious decision to go, you know what, I'm not going to do make this decision based on what sister so-and-so thinks of me, based on what brother so-and-so thinks of me. I am responsible and I'm going to stand before God on judgment day. Hello, who am I talking to one day? And I'm going to give an account of my life to Jesus. I'm going to give an account of my life to God and I'm not going to, he's not going to care about what Susie Q thought of this situation. He's not going to care about what brother Joe thought about this situation, right? He's going to question me and say, well, did you do what I called you to do? Did you step out on what I called you to do? Did you say what I called you to say? Amen. 
And so again, I think that some people have taken this to an extreme. Some people will just say, well, this is what God says, and they'll be super ugly to people. We're not called to that route either. Okay, guys, there is a balance. But we are called to please God above pleasing people. And we can still do that in a very considerate and in a kind way. You know, I was having a conversation with a friend recently, and she's in the middle of an awkward situation where two of her friends are kind of in this squabble right now. And they are not talking to each other. And this is a person who very much likes to play mediator, mediator people please do that kind of stuff. And um, basically, she opened up and she said, my goal in this situation is just to make everyone happy. That was what she said. And I looked at her and I said, you know, I don't really think that that's a great goal for you to be working towards in this situation as someone who's on the outside of this. This is not even your conflict to begin with. And she was like, why is that not a good goal for everyone to be happy in this situation? And I said, and I looked at her and her mouth kind of fell open. And I said, because you aren't even happy with yourself a lot of the time. Hello, who am I talking to today? We have times in our lives where we're not even very happy with ourselves, actions that we've done, decisions that we've made, time periods in our life, you know? And so it's so silly for us to think that our goal should be to make everybody happy all of the time or even a specific person in particular, ladies and gents, when we aren't even happy with ourselves 24 seven, right? You know, that's why our purpose has to so be focused on pleasing God first. Yes, be kind to people. Yes, be considerate to people, but we can't assume that we know what other people are thinking and our goal can't be to please you know everybody and to constantly think about what's going to make them happy because everybody's not even focused on the Lord in the right way amen just like what we talked about earlier you know some people you're not going to make them happy because their values are not focused on what God is saying that sword of the spirit has come in and they have chosen that place of darkness and to sit in that place in your life and if you're aligned with light of course you're not going to be making that person happy and you know so often Christians who get in that lukewarm state are trying to allow themselves to be tugged on by the world's opinion and to please the world and also to appease God. And that's just not the way this works, ladies and gents. You've got to pick, am I going to be a God pleaser or am I going to be a people pleaser in my personal life? So I wanted to read you Galatians 1.10 today. This says, for am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Uh, is it Dawad? I see that you put that in the comments. That is fantastic. You're one step ahead of me. Um, so anyway, we've got to really focus on this for are we trying to seek the approval of man or of God? And what's so crazy about the scripture is I want you to really think about this. It says if I were still trying to please man, I wouldn't even be a servant of Christ. That's a pretty big statement, right? Let's talk about that for a second. Why is that the case, that if you were still trying to please man first and not God, that you wouldn't even be considered a servant of Christ? Because we already talked about there's no in-between with God. It's either light, it's either right, or it's darkness, okay? There's no in-between. A lot of times the world will try to make it a very wishy-washy stance, right? Where something, everyone can come to their own truth. Everyone can have, and God goes, no. There is one way, there is one truth, there is one light. It is Jesus, amen, it is the gospel, and there's no in-between. There's no mushy stuff, there's no coexist. That's not the way this works. There is truth and there is darkness. Okay, and that's what sets people free. People get so offended by this stuff, but it is the light that sets you free. It is the 1,010% truth that sets people free, ladies and gents. And so if you're sitting in this in-between place and you're wondering why you're not seeing freedom, that's why. You're not embracing the sword of the spirit, that truth that separates the light from the darkness over people's personal lives. Amen. Let me read you another one. This is Colossians 3.23 says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Okay. And so it's saying when you are making decisions in your personal life, when you are considering things, are you putting God's opinion and his view first over what he's calling, he's asking you to do, over how your thoughts should be aligned, etc.? Or are you preferring people first? Okay. And so that's something that we really have to consider. And again, we can be kind to people while still standing for truth. We can love on people while still standing for truth, but we are called to embrace this place of that sword that stands in the place of truth and light. And we are not called to people please everyone. You know, those people who are hanging out in the darkness, it was never our job to appease them. It was never our job 
job to people please towards them. Yes, we love them. Yes, we care about them. You know, but this is very, very important for us to wrap our minds around, okay? So let's move on to this next example. So sometimes you are doing what you're thinking is making other people happy when it's really not what's making them happy at all. And this is why assumption is so incredibly dangerous. Um, I had two friends, and I'm going to keep this very vague so I can protect the situation that went down with them. And one went out of her way to do something for another person. Okay. And she went out of her way for this other friend. And she did something in the way that she thought it would make this other friend happy. But in doing this, she was actually going against what the Bible said over this particular situation. So she chose people pleasing over what she thought this other friend would want based on her attitude, things that she had assumed about her from the past. Well, come to find out what that her action was that she did that went against the Bible actually wasn't at all what that other person wanted. She assumed it was based on watching her for a period of time, but it wasn't. And she actually, when she did that action, she was disobeying God in this particular circumstance, okay? And so that's just why we've got to be so careful not to assume things about people. And, you know, sometimes we assume correctly. Sometimes we assume things very incorrectly, you know, but that's why you've got to ask the person at community with people very directly and women I'm gonna talk to you for a second we are you know <laughs> the queens of assumption a lot of the time you know and sometimes you got to be just flat out and ask people what are you thinking about this situation what do you feel about this situation amen because the devil works through assumption so much of the time in our personal lives amen and he works through us as well not just through other people and so this is really really critical so you cannot be so focused on what other people think of you that you refuse to step out on what god is calling you to do because guess what you will never make everyone happy 100 percent of the time period ladies and gentlemen and i know that that was such a devastating blow for me back in the day when i was a baby christian because i was the queen of people pleasing back in the day y'all let me tell you and you know it destroyed me being able to step out of my walk with god i was so concerned about what friends would think about what family members would think about all of this stuff and they all had these different opinions and it was something that god really had to work with me on and he said you're either going to step out on what i'm calling you to do or you're going to try to appease these other people but it's never going to launch you into the destiny that i have for you as long as you are preferring these other people and what you think their opinions are on things versus what i'm calling you to do he's like your their opinions of you are none of your business amen some of you guys need to hear that today those people's opinions of you are none of your business your job is to step out and to be obedient to what god is calling you to and the purpose that he has put on your personal life amen all right, so you've got to choose who you're going to serve in your life, God or people. And so I want to show you an example of something that happened to me a long time ago, way long time ago, um, of how assumption can really, really destroy us stepping out on the things that God has called us to or even on interactions that God has called us to be in alignment with. So when I first joined Facebook, I was a youngin. I was like really old. It was before I had ministry pages, before I was doing any of this stuff. It was just a personal page. And I was, you know, brand new, fresh into college um, and still very, very young. And so what happened was I posted a status one day. It was not a mean status. It was not a bad status. It was just a status. <laughs> and it was not aimed towards anyone in particular. And so I posted this status that particular day. And to be honest, you guys, I don't even remember what it said. That's how much it was not on my brain, right? Okay. And so I posted this status. And my youth pastor back in the day sent me a private message on Facebook. And he said, oh my gosh, you must be talking about me. And he was like, I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, whoa, whoa, I, you weren't even on my brain when I posted this thing. I was like, I was not even thinking about you when I posted this thing. And it was not meant in that way, you know? And so he assumed something. And now I now know, I didn't know this back in the day, that that was that spirit of rejection trying to rise up, you know, that he had been wounded from something back in the day. But, you know, he was so convinced that a very innocent status was talking about him in a negative way, you know. And so he assumed something. And from a place of people pleasing, he was, you know, really having this really strong reaction because he assumed that something that was posted must have been talking about him. And, you know, I think for us as Christians, a lot of the time we assume this about other people, too, because how many of you guys know Holy Spirit will read your mail a lot of the time? Amen. He's done that to me before, too. Somebody will post a status, and it's like, wow, that's exactly what I'm walking through in my personal life right now. I wonder if they know about this situation that I'm walking through. I wonder if they know this and that. And it's like, no, so often that's just God talking to you 
about your situation and he's used that person as a vessel amen but that's a great example of how assumption can really really cause problems that aren't even really there that aren't even really problems and that's why you've got to talk to people to find out what's going through their brain and that's why you can't you know depend on that person's opinion over God's opinion in your personal life because people's opinions go like this y'all they change all the time, just like our opinions change. Think back on your own personal life for a second. How many of you guys believe the exact same thing in your life that you believed 20 years ago? Probably not too many of us, right? Because as we learn, as we grow, as we mature, as we develop, as we dig into our Bibles more, what God does is he begins to align our opinions with that truth that we just talked about, with the light that we just talked about. And it's going to grow and mold and change with time to get us looking closer to looking like Jesus Christ in our personal lives. Amen. And so we've got to be very, very careful with all of this stuff. Here's another thing that may be kind of hard to hear, but I'm going to tell you guys today. I say this in love. People are not thinking about you 99.99999% of the time. I'm going to say it again. People are not thinking about you 99.999% of the time, okay? They are thinking about themselves, okay? And it's not to be ugly. It's not that they don't care about you. It's not that at all. It's just they've got their own lives they're trying to deal with. Hello, ladies and gents. You know, they're trying to provide for their families. They're stepping out on that business venture. They're worried about their health. They're trying to take care of that relative that's sick. You know, people, so often we assume that people are thinking about us all the time. And we try to link this stuff and we try to play detective and all this stuff. And you guys, that's the devil's playground right there. Okay. You know, because it's all assumption ladies and gentlemen. And so it can get us off course with stepping out on what God is calling us to step out on just because we're thinking about all these things that they might be thinking about us, ladies and gentlemen. And so it's so dangerous when we prefer people's opinions over God's opinion on these particular areas of our lives. So remember, people are not thinking about you a large majority of the time. Doesn't mean they don't care about you. Doesn't mean that you aren't important to them in their personal lives. What it does mean is most of the time people are trying to think about keeping their own lives together. And then a lot of you guys could probably testify to that. You know, you have family, you have friends that you love, that you care about in your life, but that does not mean that you're thinking about them 24 seven throughout your day. Amen. All right. The other thing that I wanted to touch on is your mindset determines your direction in your personal life. Your mindset determines your direction, okay? And so the enemy knows that. And so the way that he tries to get us is through thinking in the wrong direction and thinking wrong thoughts about people or situations in our personal lives because he knows that can hinder us from stepping out on destiny and purpose that God is calling us to, okay? So let me give you some examples of this. So you won't talk to that person if you think that they hate you and you're going to get you to part a lot of the time, okay? So you could assume something about a person and go, this person just hates me. This person is not going to be open to conversation if you're in the middle of an argument, for example, right? And if you go in with a preconceived notion that you're just going to fail from the get-go, of course you're not going to have an easy time opening up and talking to that person or addressing that situation, right? And so that's even an example of people pleasing, right? Because you're assuming something about someone that you have not even talked to, that you have not even conversed with, you have not even gotten what they say surrounding the situation. You've gone in from a place of assumption and it could be holding you back from stepping out on something that God is calling you to. Let me give you another example of this. So again, we're talking about how your mindset determines your direction that you will take with your life, okay? So for example, you won't apply for that CEO position if you don't think that you're good enough for the job. Hello, that's also a, a crazy way of thinking about people pleasing, right? Because we can even apply this to ourselves internally, right? And what we think about ourselves versus what God has to say about who we are. Hello, who am I talking to today? So if we think less than of ourselves, it could prevent us from stepping into opportunities that God has for us, okay? So let's say that you've been a part of that company for 20 years. You know it better than a lot of the people who are in those upper level positions. You've worked hard for that degree. Whatever the circumstances might be, you are more than qualified to apply for that role when it comes up, right? But when that CEO position comes around, you're sitting there and you're going, well, I just, I really don't think people would like me. I don't know if I could do a great job with it. I don't know that, you know, I'm, I'm qualified for XYZ and they might think weird of me if I applied for this. 
Y'all, your own mindset is holding you back from stepping into potential opportunities in your life. And so one of the hardest things that you'll ever have to do is to accept what God has to say about who you are. Amen? Because a lot of times we are our worst critics. How many of you guys can attest to that? I know I can attest to that. We are our hardest critics in our own personal lives a lot of the time. And so what you've got to do is you've got to dig into the Bible. And you've got to say, God, I'm very insecure about this. I'm very insecure about promotion. I'm very insecure about stepping into this next level that you have for me. God, show me who I am to you. Show me what you're calling me to be. Amen. What I love about Jesus is so often he calls us higher and he calls us something before we actually step into it. For example, Abram's name was changed to Abraham. You know, there were all these name changes that we see in the Bible. And what God was doing when he did that is he was saying, I know that you've seen yourself as deceiver, Jacob, but I'm calling you into this different name because I want to make you into something great with your personal life. Amen. And so the reason that God says, yes, I want you to step out in it before we fully feel ready a lot of the time is because he says, you know what, this is what I'm calling you to. And if you did this in your own strength, it wouldn't work. But since I'm with you and I'm going to help you and prepare the way, you, you need to be confident that if I say you can do it, you can do it. Amen. And if it's not in your own strength, then you can trust and rely and depend on me to help you as you step forward. And that's where your confidence comes from. It comes from God because in our weakness, he is strong. Amen. And so we've got to even adjust our own mindsets towards people pleasing, towards ourselves, you know, because a lot of times we will prefer our own opinions over God's opinions about who we are and what we have to be in our circumstances and in our situations. Amen. We'll say, well, I say this about myself, even though the Bible says differently. So this must be true. And God's going, no, that's also a form of people pleasing, right? You are preferring your own opinion about what you have to say about this situation over what I'm calling you to, over what I'm calling you to step out on. Amen. And so that's really, really critical for us to think about. Okay. So communication is so key guys. And if it comes down to, you know, somebody who doesn't like you versus what God is calling you to do, you know, you can't change the entirety direction of what God is asking you to do in your life because it makes aunt so-and-so upset with you, you know, and you can't do it and you've got to make a decision. Who am I, you know, going to please in my personal life? It can utterly destroy you from stepping out on purpose. You know, before I went to form this ministry page forever ago, I went into a period where I just fasted for a while because I wanted God to launch this thing the right way and I wanted him to get my heart prepared for this. I knew he was calling me to this, but I said, God, I don't want to approach this thing in my own strength. And so I completely got rid of social media for a while. And I went into this mode where I just said, God, show me. And, you know, I had tried. God had actually been calling me to this for a year or two to make it a public page. And I had done kind of this private thing where I had just opened it up to friends and family and just a very few people. And, you know, it was because I was in this place of people pleasing. I was so terrified because I knew there would be some people that would disagree with me and they had never seen this side of me before because I, I had always kept this hidden from them, you know. And I knew that by stepping out on this purpose that God was calling me to, it was going to fully expose that and there might not be some people that liked that in my personal life, you know. And these were people that I was, were closer to at the time, like family members, et cetera, all of that stuff. And so I had a decision to make. Am I going to appease God or am I going to appease people? And, you know, eventually I did get obedient. But to be honest with you guys, it took me way longer than I should have. I should have immediately, when God said go, I should have said yes, sir, and stepped out on it. But I didn't do that. And that's a great example of how people pleasing can hinder you from stepping into your destiny. You know, you cannot be so concerned about what other people think about you with every decision that you make and with every encounter that you have with someone that it causes you to not be obedient to what God is asking you to do in the now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is so, so, so critical. And so all of that to say, I told you guys I wouldn't keep you on long, but I want you to, you know, go to people directly if you need to know what they have to say or what they have to, you know, um, give about a situation. And, you know, don't assume you know, the devil works through assumption. We just talked about that today. And so you've got to choose which side you're going to align on. That Bible is a sword. And Jesus just read, said in that first scripture that we talked through today that he didn't come to bring peace, right? He came to bring division. He came to separate light from darkness, to identify lies from truth, 
over people's lives. And Jesus doesn't hang out in this weird in-between zone where, you know, people make up their own truths. That's not God, okay? And where people just do what they feel like doing, okay? That's not Christianity, all right? And I know that offends some people, and I know that hurts some people, but that's not where God is. If you want to truly see freedom in your personal life, you've got to embrace full truth. You can't embrace this wishy-washy place. This wishy-washy place where you create what you want and do what you want based on your own feelings. It may feel good to your flesh, but it's not going to set you free, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why God tells us, he warns us in the Bible, I didn't come to just bring peace. I came to divide because that division of light from darkness, of truth from lies, is what's going to set people free in their personal lives. And so then he poses a question to us. He says, you have a decision in your personal life. Are you going to people please and do what the world wants you to do? And, you know, not step out on what I'm calling you to because you're so afraid you're going to offend sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so? Or are you going to do what I'm calling you to do and be more focused on what my opinion is over what their, you know, opinion is going to be towards you if you step out in this situation? So we've got to make the choice to align ourselves with truth and with light rather than with darkness, even if it makes some people a little bit upset with us. Amen? You know, you can't spend your life constantly worrying about, you know, will this offend sister or brother so-and-so if I make this decision? I'm gonna be honest with you guys. There are so many people that follow this page in particular. I can't sit there and think about a lot of the time, will this status offend so-and-so? Will this status, you know, do this to so-and-so? And it's not that I don't love and care about you guys, but there's almost always something that's going to make somebody mad. Hello, a lot of you guys have encountered this personally, right? And so what you've got to do is you've got to be obedient to what God says. It's not to say we get it right 100% of the time. We're human, you guys, right? But what it is to say is you've got to be obedient to following God. Because like I said, people's opinions and even our opinions change so frequently and so much of the time. And so if you base your opinions on what people have to say, you're going to base that thing that you're trying to build or those relationships in your life on sinking sand. It's just like this. Sand is not stable. Amen. The Bible talks about this, establishing your house on the rock, establishing yourself on the rock, which is Jesus. Amen. So you can't establish your foundation on something that's just going to fall apart and expect it to work well. That's what happens when we establish and move our lives forward based on other people's opinions and what they think we should be doing versus what God is calling us to in our personal lives. Amen. So you've got to have that solid foundation. You know, even think about with the building. You know, the foundation is what supports the rest of the building, and it takes the longest to establish the foundation. You know, I live in a city that's, you know, experiencing a lot of growth right now. And in that particular city, what's happening is, you know, there's a lot of new buildings going up. And it's been so fascinating to me to watch how it takes a long time for those foundations to get built. But then as soon as the foundation's good to go and they've stabilized it and it's where it needs to be, the rest of the building, gosh, it seems like it shoots up in just a few days. It's like incredible how fast they can shoot these buildings up once the foundation stage is secure and stable. So you can try to level that foundation all you want, but if it's built on sand, if it's built on other people's opinions, at some point in time it's going to fall apart because people's opinions change. Guess what, you guys? The light and the truth of your life, it will never, ever change. Ever. That's why God is so trustworthy in your personal life. And that's why you've got to make your decisions and build your house on that rock. You've got to make your decisions and build your house and build, you know, your decision-making process on what God has to say and what God thinks versus what people have to think. Again, we can love and be considerate to people. We should love on and be considerate to people. But you cannot build your Christian walk based on that or you're never going to get very far. Because that foundation, if it's not based on what God says, your house is going to continually fall apart. You're never going to step into that purpose. You're never going to step into that destiny that God has for you. And so you got to learn how to fear God more than you fear people over that situation. Amen. I love you guys so much. Thank you to everybody who joined today. And I will catch you on the flip side.